Ellis Cinema back, another a dish. How we doing out there? Good, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wonderful. Oh, Adrian, uh speak to you personally right now. I'm sure you probably die a little every time you hear your the theme that you created for my show. <laughs> I I know it comes in distorted a little bit, man, but I until they pay me for this shit, I am not going to go buy like a soundboard. I'm certainly not going to sit down for hours and edit. I work 40, 50 hours a week. I don't I don't need to do all that for a talk show, for a talk show. Edit for a talk show. If you do, if you can't talk comfortably, and I do mean by yourself. I mean this is crazy person shit. Like when you, you know, I'm in, I'm in a room by myself talking to myself, you know, whatever. Um but you you better be able to uh, editing editing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But having said that, I if a professional podcaster walked in here right now, they would spit on me. <laughs> they would spit on me for how I how I choose to get down with my with my show. They'd be like, "This is your setup. This is what you do." Oof. I mean, your content was mediocre enough, but the, your setup, you might as well just quit. I might, I just might, I just don't, I, I don't, it's, I, you, you go to work, and I talk, and then I come home, I get paid for that shit, I don't, I don't get paid for this, it, it's just hard, it's, it, I'm always talking, and you want to hear something that's crazy, I know you're not going to believe me, I, I don't even know if I'm going to believe it when I say it, but I, I don't know that I like to talk all that much anymore, I mean, sure, like, back in the day, extrovert, right, ah, I don't, I kind of just, I don't, I, less is more, less is more, well then you should definitely quit the show, well calm down now, I didn't say that I don't like promoting, I do like to promote a thing or two, I do find it cool in some sense, not the show, I, the fucking show is the bane of my existence, but I do feel cool uh, uh, to some degree, even when it's said like out of, spite's not the right word, but even when it's said with negative connotations, like, I do like when y'all DM me, when when you all come up to me, when you whatever, and tell me I've never heard of this shit. That makes me feel good. I do I do like that. So maybe that's why I continue to do it. I'm a fucking child. I'm like, nah, nah, I know what's cool and you don't. I don't know. I don't fucking know. But as you see on your screen, your dial. And today's no exception. In fact, this is part three, baby. Stop number three. On Ellis Cinema's Trail of Vengeance. That's right. We gotta shoot up some more motherfuckers on this third stop. Ellis Cinema's Trail of Vengeance. Uh, Banditos. So it's unfortunate that this one did not come last because in the Vengeance Trails, Vengeance Trails box set uh, released by Arrow Video. So goddamn good. So got not only is the box set great, but I mean, I mean, not only is Arrow Video great, but I had never heard of these films. Well, maybe I'd heard of Massacre Time. Maybe I'd heard of Massacre Time, but I had not. Uh, I had not heard of My Name Is Pecos, which was part two. We stopped there last time in Houston, I believe, uh, and. I def I hadn't seen and God said to Cain and that's gonna be our final one. Um, I hadn't seen Banditos. I I do kind of wish Banditos came last because in terms of a slightly more Americanized Italian Western. So if you didn't join the other two podcasts, just kind of like a brief spaghetti western fucking what is a spaghetti western um so they were westerns made in italy but they would take people from uh, highly stylized um i think what you know really kind of got people to take notice is just how good uh the cinematography or the directors of photography were just 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 different highly stylized and hadn't seen it before but uh, they would bring people from all over the world to star in these in these films, these spaghetti westerns, and they wouldn't shoot any sound on set. So everything was done in post for set. They would just be like, hey, we're going to run the camera. You do your dialogue in English because you're American, and you do your dialogue in Italian because you're Italian, and so on and so forth. And 
I mean, one, that would just be confusing as shit to me. Like, if I was on set, like, okay, I speak mine. And I know what he says because I read the script. I know what he says back to me. But it would just, I as an actor, you, you got to give some of these guys props to, you know, they didn't, fuck, this is really taking me out of the moment. Go all Christian Bale. Or maybe not. Professionals wouldn't do that. I don't know. But that's that's what a spaghetti western is there. Um, in this, out of the four, I, I think, ah, Oh man, I do like I do like all of them. For I would say, though I liked it, my name is Pecos is probably my least favorite. Um, but I mean, it's still pretty decent. But fuck, man, Masker Time's good. That was part one. Um, Banditos is good. I think what I really love about well, why are you going to talk about? It? <laughs> and God said to Cain, um, the Banditos part. Anyway, Banditos. Came out in 67, starring Enrico Maria Salerno. Uh, I just did an episode with him. Uh, Hamana, Hamana, Hamana. The bird with the crystal plumage in Argento's uh, horror. I believe that was his first film, his first feature. Um, Terry Jenkins, who plays Ricky Schott. Venantino Venantini. Venantino Venantini plays Billy Kane. Maria Martin plays Betty Starr. Marco, oh God, take a shot if I fuck it up, and you know I will, so I actually, I, until I get it right, you have to keep drinking, right? Uh, Marco Guglielmi. Nope. Googly, googly eyes. Nope. Goog, googly me. Yeah. I think we got it that time, so you can stop drinking now. Uh, Chris Huerta, who played uh, Vaganzo, he, what a good look. Fucking Chris Huerta has what a good fucking like B villain. Like he wasn't even in the main. He wasn't the main villain. Billy Kane was. Venantino Venantini uh, was the 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 villain. Uh, or I mean, man, in the West it was so hard, bro. It was so hard in the West, bro. Was t- I mean, they were all heroes. It, it, what I'm saying is that back in the West times, you know, the anti hero, the spaghetti Western, you blur. Those lines, do you not? How uh, many? But yeah, Vingans uh, as a B level fucking enemy villain, so good. I thought. In fact, in many ways, am I gonna? This is why you don't step in the booth in one ticket. This is why you should edit it like fucking normal goddamn podcasters. Uh, you know, he in terms of his acting or his 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 presence. He may be one of my favorites in the film. I mean, Salerno's good, tried and true, as always. Super, super good. Terry Jenkins, uh, a UK actor who played Ricky Shot. I thought he was pretty good, but, you know, it, it's your stereotypical um, spaghetti western. Not a whole lot of dialogue uh, in most cases for our heroes. Um, <laughs> always being very quiet. You know, they follow the same tropes as uh, or the a lot of the almost there's so many like when Django came out like fucking 50 more Django's followed <laughs> but all you know named differently but anyway it's just ah, all like how how much does fucking Clint Eastwood talk <laughs> in uh a fistful of dollars or a few dollars more not a whole lot and it's and we made a hundred plus uh, hundreds of films that just followed the exact same. Hey, when something, when something works, I, I suppose you make hay while the sun is shining. I suppose. Um, uh, the music in Banditos, uh, the first two were uh, Lalo Gori uh, did um, "How Many Massacre Time" and "My Name Is Pecos." Changing it up here with Agisto Machi. Agisto. Machi. I think I did that all right. You don't have to drink there. Um, a story by Luis Lasso and Juan Cobos. Uh, written by Romano Migliorini. Whoop, almost had it. Migliorini. Migliorini. Two shots. Uh, Gian Battista Musetto. No shots. And Juan Cobos. And directed by Massimo Dalamo. Dalamano. Damn it. And that one was easy. Massimo Dalamano. Uh, 
I think if memory ser- this whole lot of so I watched all four of these films back to back and with Arrow, you know, they they leave no stone unturned if they can help it minus whoever fucking did the goddamn subtitles for my name is Pecos minus that person. It's no offense to you guy. I just I don't uh, either I I'm going crazy and it's the name is Klein because I mean on Google they have the name is Klein, but audio wise, I hear Klein, sir. And it was Klein, but anyway, Arrow leaves no stone unturned. Fucking my brain's mush. All the the bonus features, but Banditos and uh, and God said to Kane, stand. What well, they fuck fuck. I mean, massacre time. That opening sequence and mauled by dogs. Shit, Fulci for life. Um, I knew that I was going to like Banditos from the opening sequences, uh, which was uh, a train robbery. Well, first, you actually see a man get thrown off the back of the train, which, no spoilers, we'll just say, hey, look close. Go on now. Um, and then a train is robbed. The fucking uh, Emilio Forescott who did, was the DP cinematographer on the well director of photography uh just amazing and i think dalama like i said I, dalamano i i watched so many bonus features i think i should have i could google it but i can't I, I i don't know what to do with my hands um and and that just brings the sh- the show to a fucking grinding halt oh we're going to listen to this fucking piece of garbage google something no well so i think dalamano was the cinematographer on two of sergio leone's picks i could be fucking wrong on that but anyway if i'm wrong i'm admitting right now i didn't know so don't angry dm me but i'm pretty sure so but this was his first if if memory serves this is his first go at as a director um and it stands out so, in a, in a good way. I know he wouldn't say this. All cinematographers are like, if you notice the shot, then we didn't do a good job. Shut up. I'm a f- I am like movies. I've even told a cinematographer that before. I was like, don't don't stop that. <laughs> and actually a pretty, like, uh, not like huge, not like Roger Deakins huge, but I did tell a working and really, really good f- cinematographer, I was like, stop saying that shit to us. And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, look, it, you can say it to like the people that only go see Marvel stuff. Fine, whatever. But like, I watch whatever, like everything, everything. I, you know, I, I don't. I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I hit the three hundred. No, two fifty, two fifty or three hundred mark for the year. New movies that I haven't seen. <laughs> you know, like you don't need to talk to me that way. I want to notice your work, sir. I want to notice. Um, and he just, he poo-pooed that. Well, I'm not doing my job if you're noticing. Yes, you are. To us. Maybe not to them, but to us. And by us, I mean the voices in my head. And by us, I mean, who cares? Uh, <laughs> I knew I was going to like this movie from the opening shots because as the train uh, is being robbed, marvelous, uh, exterior, just very grand exteriors great parallel tracking with the the gang approaching the uh the train just a great parallel tracking shot in this throughout the film is is money i think like it and it enhance it enhanced your film in a good way now i know um i, I that can turn the table for me you know, I think a lot of the reasons that dare I <clears throat> bring it up in a negative fashion. I, you know, I don't like being negative, but we got to call a spade a spade now. Um, but much like uh, Crazy Samurai 400 versus 1, you know, that was touted as to be this big fucking this thing. And it uh, anyway, but if that would have had good cinematography, it would have swayed how I received it uh that's uh, what do i say on the show all the time fucking execution is everything mate all the time i don't care if i've i don't care if i've seen the exact same story with the exact same dialogue if it's shot different uh, all right <laughs> like that that matters to me 
Uh, mas- hey, I was right. And all that babbling, I was Googling. <laughs> <laughs> Massimo Dalamo, uh, Dalamano, <clears throat> Leon's cinematographer for A Fistful of Dollars and a few dollars more, and went on to a decade-long career as a director. Dalamano has work uh, has been working as a cinematographer since the mid-1940s. Yeah, so... Um, well, that's good that I didn't fucking... I was talking all that shit. Anyway, Sp- uh, Spaghetti Western <laughs> starring Enrico Maria Salerno, Venantino Venantini, Terry Jenkins, was Dalamano's feature directing debut. It was based on a story by Luis Lasso, uh, Luis Lasso and uh, Juan Cobos. And Cobos co-wrote the screenplay, as I aforementioned. And um, it is about Richie Martin... Ricky Shot, or is that his name? Fuck, why would you ruin that for the fucking folks? God damn it. And now you're acknowledging it? You're making it worse. <laughs> Richard Martin is caught up in a bandit raid by Billy Kane, Martin's one-time friend and pupil, now a ruthless outlaw. Having heard Martin... I paused too much there, I'm sorry. I, my ex said she hated how I read. And she's right. This is god awful. I don't even I don't even know how I tie my shoes. Having heard Martin is on his trail, Kane shoots Martin through the palms of both his hands. So that happens at the the, the great train robbery. It is how we close. And even that, like some of you may be like, oh like it's too fucking on the nose with like some of the shots, whether it's just the hand and close up and Billy Kane out of focus in the ba- you know whatever like I I like that shit though I don't mind it like in fact like everything should look like you drew it I I think like it should be this very carefully crafted staged thing not all the time you know one shots are fine depending on what's going on you know I I know the younger cats are always like oh one take it shut up like that's not always the good thing that you know it, sometimes it's great if you're doing if you're doing a one take and it's a conversation about bread but the camera's always moving no no (laughs) that's i well i guess with one cut one take one long shot those are all different right no years later martin ekes out a little oh nope back up a little bit uh, Martin is on his trail. Kane shoots Martin through the palms of both his hands, ensuring he'll never fire or even hold a pistol again. And they were once friends. How could you do that to a friend? But this is vengeance. <laughs> we're on vengeance trails here. Years later, Martin ekes out a living as a impresario, Richard Martin's trick shooting exhibit. And he's a two-bit precision shooting traveling sideshow with a world-renowned gunman named Ricky Shot. And what's hilarious about that is that uh, when Terry Jenkins enters the film, he just takes on the fucking name of Ricky Shot because it was a traveling sideshow. When we first see that this is what Martin is doing, there's a couple guys in the crowd that are like, (laughs) watch this, and they just shoot... (laughs) the Ricky the 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 current Ricky shot at the time before uh, we meet the new Ricky shot played by Terry Jenkins who steps into the film because it all everything happens so fast um like that train sequence happens and then a bunch of time has passed and he's doing this little circus of trick shooting and then his partner just gets shot right out of the gate he goes in tries to fight the guys and in steps terry jenkins but terry jenkins had a plan he had a plan um but i i i i like it i i don't need a fuck i i just Depending what the movie is, what the movie's about, I don't always need justification. Now, I know I've said on this uh, show before that the action's got to motivate the action and the horror's got to motivate the horror. Like, I don't want you just to be like, oh, let's tear off this woman's skin for 15 minutes. Like, if we're not, even if, you know, like, it has some bearing, I don't know. I You just, it's, 
there's got to be motivation there. Now, in some instances, this is a Western from 1967. I don't mind if you just shoot the trick shot guy out of the gate and this is what prompts to meet our protagonist. I don't, that, that's fine. The, who happens to be in the same bar, you, you know, like that's, it's totally cool with me. But I did sit there and kind of giggle because it was just like, he does this trick shot and then the next shot heard is him getting shot. And I was just like, oh, hell yeah. I, let's let's keep the body count high. You know, I think that's another thing too, that why, you know, Arrow may have had a, um, want to release these is the body count is high in massacre time uh it's high in my name is pecos and other i mean somebody dies in within three minutes of that <laughs> maybe even less and banditos no exception uh god said to Cain, no exception uh but i i i do sometimes like a little senseless violence and i and i if it would be more believable and appropriate so you guys understand what i'm what is he babbling about it's more believable if it's in the west you can't just have a fucking trick shot person get shot in 2021. Everybody would have their phones out and whatever. It's not believable. But I do believe that there was just assholes in the West that just walked around just, oh, I don't like his face. I don't like the way that his he looks when he walks and shoot people. That's what they used to do in the West. It was tough. It was tough in the West. Um, yeah, Ricky shot. Uh, Mark, yeah, after his partner is shot and killed, he recruits a drifter who just helped him out, so he's not really a drifter. The the fight led into the bar, and some ass-kicking went on, and uh, the new Ricky shot helped out. Um, oh, they really blow the... Oh, they, oh, I can't keep reading that. They that, that That's hogwash. Why, you don't want to ruin that for the folks ruin that for the folks that's because there's a great twist in this film i think i think motivation i like the the uh double triple cross i don't mind that and of course um as i mentioned in the last two it has a theme ballad of the train that's right i think we had ballad of pecos and now we have ballad of the train sung by john irison John Irison. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and it, I just, uh, can't we ban spoilers? Like, you know how they took Trump off of Twitter? Can we do the same thing when, like, all trailers and, <laughs> like, you should not, like, you can write your review, but you should not be able to release it until a year <laughs> <laughs> a year after, or you have to talk about it in a manner that doesn't ruin anything, like I do, naturally. <laughs> I, I, just, I, I don't know. Did I just read, not to go off the rails here, but I mean, Banditos, Vengeance Trails, Arrow Video, I wouldn't be talking about it, I, and I said at the top of the hour, I said at the top of the hour that it was my favorite of the four. Uh, what? Uh, did it, did, did, I, I was so excited that, they didn't show the Spider-Man trailer. They said they weren't going to show another one until the release date. Did I just read that it got leaked and there's a bunch of fucking... What? Why? Why do you want to do that to yourself? I, it was rampant. And, of course, it was ruined for me. I didn't want to see the screen caps of some of that shit. But why? I, I'm asking you. Why would you want to go into the movie knowing that that particular sequence, which is they only show highlights in the trailer... Okay, they don't show you the fucking conversation with what's her name, Aunt May. Sorry, I'm not a, I'm not comic booky. I'm Cohen brothery. But is is it, is it Aunt May? <laughs> it's probably like Wizard of Oz or something. Uh, it, it, I don't. You're not gonna see in the trailer Aunt May and Peter having a cup of milk and just talking about high school. You know, you're gonna see highlights. Why would you want? Why would you want to do that to yourself? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. And then I and I thought, good, good. They they don't get to see the trailer until they see the movie Christmas, whatever. And you blew it. You fucking blew it. And you're already bitching too. Fuck sake. Not what actually it was overwhelmingly positive is what I saw. Um, God damn it, man. <laughs> this was great about the Vengeance Trail films. I didn't. I hadn't seen any of them. 
I hadn't seen. I knew of Massacre Time because I was a Fulci fan, and the only re- I I think I did see Massacre Time, but it was like fucking twenty years ago, so it doesn't count anymore. I didn't I didn't recall any of it when I was watching it, um, and I would have assumed that the, at least the dog part would have stuck with me, um, but all of these films are so good, and I had never heard of them. And walking into them blind, every single one, including Banditos. Like when I, again, that, I, well, I shouldn't say blind. I know it's going to be men doing men shit and going to get their revenge because they're insecure. <laughs> With Anyway. Um, but, oh, to sit down and see this opening train sequence. And we're talking the 60s, ladies, gents, however you identify we're talking the 60s. This is real shit. This is all epic. This isn't a fucking green screen in Robert Rodriguez's backyard. Love you, man. I, it's not. It, it, you know, this is huge action. Like, it. Uh, just think of how hard it is to, in sequence, get 20 fucking horses to go side by side with a train. Just And now you got to film it. And, and not just film it. It's got to look good. It's got to look good, too. It's not, that's tough shit. <laughs> and and I'm just going in blind. I go, oh, because my name is Pecos, a, a little bit more central, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller film. Banditos, it's in the name. It sounds grand. It sounds grand. Um, but I just, I, I, I love old Hollywood, man. And well, in this particular case, I believe, was it all shot in Rome? Eh? I could be wrong, but uh, not shot in the States. It. I it's Hollywood movies whatever I just I love old I just love movies I like making them I love watching I love movies as Keanu Reeves would say and I do and if you haven't seen that YouTube clip talk if you're not a movie fan and you I just urge you to YouTube Keanu Reeves I love movies because you'll be like you'll get done watching it and it's only like a f- eleven second clip you'll go I need to watch more movies. <laughs> But there's a balance because you can't watch as much as me because it's not good for you. I even I know that. I but I don't know how to break the cycle. It's, it's one of the last addictions that I have left, <laughs> where I just I don't. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. The t there there is time where the TV is off for days. That never used to happen ever. But sometimes I just I my peepers man. Look at a screen all day at work. And come home. Look at a screen while you're working. And then when you try to watch the screen for stuff that like, oh, you know, like I only like two cartoons because I'm a, an adult, which is still South Park. You're stupid. You're stupid. No, you're stupid. Um, and Archer, like it makes it tough to sit down and watch Archer where you're like, um, I, <laughs> if I, fuck it, I just watched three Westerns today. Now I that's not true. I watched two and two. Is what I did. I did uh, Massacre Time, and uh, a much like how these shows will be released, I'll give you two out the jump, and then I'll give you two tomorrow, or in this case, today. <laughs> I it, somebody gave me shit about that. They were like, "Hey, by the way, the way that you release episodes doesn't make sense." <laughs> I said, "I know. I I don't know. It feels good. Just get it out of here." I think you want to know what it is. Um, I didn't have a computer because I was a piece of garbage and I was using my ex's computer who was not a piece of garbage and I uh, <laughs> it's like if like the comp- if the computer were to short out which it did like it was one of the computers that you had to keep it plugged like it had to be attached to the charger otherwise if you pull it off it just powered down um, no battery life and the amount of shows that I didn't post like ex- immediately when I was done with it you know and you lose all those uh, that has a lot to do with how I release the episode I haven't had that problem in quite some time but it still I and you know keep you on your toes you know some people like to do once a week or Monday Wednesday Friday or whatever nah hit you with two in the mouth on Friday and then two on Saturday, go rogue for a week <laughs> or two, <laughs> and then just next time you check, my, just Sean, that's not how you generate traction. I don't, oh my God, do I not want traction. Traction means more work. 
and I, like I said, give me the paper, and we'll talk. And I'm not even necessarily going to agree with that. If somebody said right now, hey, we'll give you five grand less than what you're making at your current job, can't offer you um, benefits, get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> to podcast, get the fuck out of my It's so much easier than what you, I don't give a fuck. I don't, like, it doesn't mean shit if I go to the gym and I fucking tear something and I can't go to the goddamn doctor. No, 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 no. Can't have that happen. Vengeance, Trails, Banditos, my favorite of the four, methinks. I think. I don't know. And God Said to Cain has some, like, that's the one I'm going to be doing next, our fourth stop. That has some, a real good horror atmosphere. Only because, well, we'll get there. Enrico Maria Salerno, Terry Jenkins, Maria Martin, Marco Guglami, Chris Huerta, Venantino, Venantini, shit, Banditos, Vengeance Trails, Arrow Video Release. Oh, fuck, I didn't talk about all the good bonus features. God damn it. A man in a saloon, they call him Simon, Western Bandits, alternate end title sequence. Fuck, I don't think I did it on the other ones either. I am trash. Fuck, I am trash, man. There was some great bonus features on fucking, actually, all of them up to this date. You slipping, bruh. You slipping, bruh. You learn all this shit, and then you fucking talk about the movie for seven minutes. You are garbage. Oh, is this still on? Of course it is. You don't edit. <laughs> ah, the voice is in my head. Hey, listen, I'm... We got... 